All right, Psalm 92, we're going to be in there today. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night. The one thing that life has taught me is the older you get, the faster life moves along. The faster the years fly by. It seems like yesterday when AJ was born, now she's nine years old. It feels like we just got done with the holidays, and yet here comes Thanksgiving on its way back again. And everybody's already advertising for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back in July. <laughs> Everybody likes to go in debt so much, I don't understand it. <laughs> they want to hurt us. Let's get in debt again. But life flies by the older you get. And as I, I want to preach this message of Thanksgiving. I know it's not here yet, but when you wake up in the morning, it'll be Thanksgiving. Yeah. Many people are already making plans where Thanksgiving is going to be, what, what they're going to make, who's going to be there, who's not going to be there, or who they hope ain't going to be there. <laughs> we, we all got those guys in our family, we know. It's all right. As I preach this sermon... I'd like to try, if I can, to answer the question, why is it a good thing to give thanks unto God? That's a good question. You look at the young folks today, and you see a different world, a different people. The attitudes are different. It's not like it used to be. Used to, parents taught their kids manners, respect. They drilled it into their kids. They learned it or they didn't survive their childhood. I mean, that's just the way it was. If I had talked to my mom or dad or my grandparents the way these kids talk to their parents today, I would be wearing false teeth right now. And I'd have had to be the one to pay for them. These two parents stressed good manners to their kids. And not only that, schools used to also do that. Along with reading, writing, and math, and all that good stuff that we love so much, they taught them manners as well. They taught them how to be polite, how to share, how to have patience. But now that's all seems like it's gone by the wayside, and we now we've raised a generation of people of ingratitude. People that don't know how to be thankful, people that don't know how to display a good, proper attitude towards one another. Seems like we want to run each other over more than we want to help one another. Used to, when you went to the grocery store, they made you feel glad to be there. They knew that if it wasn't for you, they wouldn't have a job. You could tell when you went through their line how they greeted you with a smile. How they asked if there's anything they can do for you. How they thanked you for going to shopping in their store. Now they make you feel like you need to apologize for bothering them, for making them work. You ever felt that way? Like you inconvenience somebody, make them have to work. You tell them their attitude, they don't even want to be there. Ingratitude. It's more prevalent today. Because we no longer force the values that was once taught to us. We've gone by the wayside. We've gotten away from it. And now you can see it in everyday society. Used to, and this, I remember this when I was a little kid, you could go to the service station and they'd pump your gas for you. And check your oil and wash your windshield. Check your oil and wash your windshield. Yeah. And they did it with a smile. Glad to serve you. 
all that's gone away. When I was a young kid back in the 80s, that was starting to be phased out. They started disappearing a little at a time. A lot of great friendships were formed just from getting your gas. You knew the guy who was going to pump your gas, you knew him by name. He knew you by name. Now we've gotten away from that. And now we're in the middle of an age of ingratitude. Gratitude is certainly a problem today, but it seems that in the days of Christ, it was also prevalent. Remember Luke 17 when Jesus healed the, the ten lepers? He healed ten lepers, and only one came back to say thank you. One out of ten came back to say thank you. In gratitude. But on the bright side of things, us as Christians have the opportunity to show the world that Christ is within us by showing an attitude of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude. Is that right? <laughs> I didn't even plan that. <laughs> My poet didn't know it. Psalm shows us why we should have a thankful heart. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. One of, one of the most wild things you and I can do as Christians is to thank God every day for what he's done for us in our lives. Right. Every day we ought to be thankful because God's done things for us. We're all here today because our car started. Amen? Amen. Everybody seems like they drive nice cars. I drive the jalopy out there, but it runs. It got me here. It gets me to work. That's all that matters. And it's got air conditioning too. <laughs> That's a big thing here in Texas. Wendy had to go with that AC for about a week because hers quit working. Two weeks. Ask her how grateful she is about that AC now. <laughs> Reminds me of a man who's, who was unsaved, an unsaved man. Everybody knew him because he had a bad attitude. He had anger all the time and he cursed a lot. Once this man got saved, and somehow another word traveled to his work and his guys he worked with found out that he'd gotten saved. And they thought they were going to test this man's salvation so they hid his lunch from him. When lunchtime came around, they was waiting for this guy to blow up on him, start cussing, throwing a fit. But the man said, praise God, at least I still have an appetite. <laughs> it's a great thing to give thanks unto God because God's done so much for us. Why should we give thanks? Because giving thanks lightens life's burdens. We look around and we see two different kinds of people. Those who are thankful and those who spend their time complaining. I mean, life's just nothing but terrible to them. They can't see nothing good in life. Like I told you before, you ever ask somebody how they're doing and spend the next 10, 15 minutes of great and you ask them that question? They sit and tell you why everything, somebody cheated them, somebody done them wrong, somebody, somebody, somebody. Their life's terrible, but it's not their fault, it's everybody else's fault. They can't see nothing good in life. Hard to see a forest when you got your nose pressed up against a tree. You just step back and just look around, you can see the forest. If we step back and examine our lives, we can see all the different ways that God's been good to us. All the different ways that God's blessed us. Everybody has their share of problems. Believe it or not, we all have our problems. We all fight battles. We all have our struggles. But you talk to some people and you think they're the only ones that struggled in life. They're the only ones that got it bad. I mean, if I had a dime for every time I hear somebody at work, I, they don't pay me enough to do this job. <laughs> I tell them, no, you just can't live on what you're worth. That makes them happy. They love to hear that. I got a lot of friends at work. <laughs> Too honest. I believe it. Always complaining because it's hard work. It is. I mean, a lot of people don't make it past the first week. They quit. It's not fun digging ditches, putting in rock, heavy rock. Or walking around in 108 degree weather with a weed eater that weighs about 20, 30 pounds. The longer the day goes on, the heavier that weed eater gets. I get it. I know I do it. But I've got a family that depends on me. 
I can't just quit because I don't like it because it's unpleasant. I'm thankful that God gives me the energy and the, the physical ability to be able to do that job. A lot of people, when they see that you got to work, they, I'm out of here. I don't want this. They think they show up, they deserve a paycheck. Pay me, I showed up all week. But what did you do? Complain the whole entire week about having to work. It's amazing. But everybody has their share of problems in life. The difference is, is how do you respond to your problems? How do you respond to life's challenges? Do you sit there and complain? Sit there and have a pity party? Life's tough. I, I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I just can't handle this. Get in the boat. We're all in the same boat. Do you sit there and complain or do you sit back and think of how God's been good to you? I promise you God's blessings far outnumber your problems. If you stop and think about it, whatever things God's done for you. It doesn't matter how tough life gets, there's always something to be thankful for. Always something to be grateful for. You can tell somebody that complains all the time that it's a beautiful day, and they'll respond, yeah, but it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Or the glasses, glasses half full, they see it as half empty. Always thinking negative, and you can see, you can see how, how it affects them. You want to go into depression, think negative all the time. That'll do it every single time. Look at nothing but how bad life is. Don't look at the good, just look at the bad. If you want to go into depression, that's the best way to do it. That's the best recipe. And you see those people, those that are depressed. They're always negative. Hardly you say anything positive at all. If they even say anything positive. Always think about all the good things God's done for us. Because God's been good. And he didn't have to do this for us. He didn't have to bless us. God's not obligated to bless any of us. But thank God he does. Thank God that God helps us through life's problems. Now we're not having to do it on our own. I've seen me trying to handle problems on my own. I'm not very good at it. I usually make it worse. It's also a good thing to give thanks because, one, it lightens life's burdens, but also it quickens our spiritual perception on God. As I said, God doesn't have to bless us, but He does. God's good. God's been good to me, I know that. I mean, I don't have the, have the best, but I have enough. I have enough. Now, I don't live in a fancy mansion. I don't drive a, a nice truck like I like to drive, but I don't. But the truck I got gets me where I need to, gets me to my job, and it gets me home, and it gets me here. God's been good to me. You can tell I haven't missed very many meals. One or two. Not too many. That's just the time that I'm sleeping. <laughs> you think about everything parents do for their kids. Wash their clothes. Prepare their meals. Take them to school. Pay for their sports. I mean, take care of them. AJ's got it made. She's got a better childhood than I had. When I was a child, there wasn't no such thing as a tablet or a cell phone. But you'll hear us, Dad, I'm bored. How in the world are you bored? You can't even see the floor of her room most of the time because all the toys she's got scattered everywhere. We've got a museum. Our, our, our wall is a museum of all the paintings that she's painted. But she's bored. <laughs> You want to ruin AJ's day? Tell her it's bath time. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you'd think you'd ask her to lay 300 yards of concrete and you told her it's time to get a bath. Ask her about it. 
When he tells the AJ it's bath time, oh, 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 I thought I took a bath yesterday. <laughs> yeah, AJ, that was yesterday. This is today. Went to school, you went to karate, you're sweating. Yeah, sweat pouring off her face. I don't need a bath. <laughs> don't tell them enough. She's up there here at the end of her. That's the best way to ruin AJ's day. Tell her it's bath time. She's in the middle of watching the movie she's seen a thousand times, but she don't want to miss it this time. Oh, yeah, and there's something she didn't see before. When you tell her it's time to take a bath, her, her perception on, on, on Wendy when she tells her it's bath time is she's a terrible mother making me take a bath. Oh, she know, I got better things. Ask her to take up the trash. That's fun, too. Y'all see the sweet little AJ when she comes to church. You don't see the behind the scenes AJ. She puts on a good show, doesn't she? Oh, she's the sweetest child. Oh, yes, sir. Tell her to take a, tell her to take a bath. That sweetness went down the drain of her last bath. But how did your kids respond whenever you told them to take out the trash? Why do I need to take out the trash? I did it yesterday. Yeah, when the trash was full yesterday, you took it out and it was empty. Now it's full again. No, we're not spying on you, Jordan. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thanks, Jordan. I'm worried about it. <laughs> but I remember my dad told me to mow the lawn. I don't want to mow the lawn, Dad. I'm tired. He coming home from a full day's work. All I did was went to school. Ask me how that how that excuse worked out for me. I thought they were the worst parents in the world making me mow the yard. AJ thinks we're terrible and we make her take a bath. But what they don't see is we're teaching them responsibility. They may not be thankful for it now, but when they look back on down the road, you all remember those days, you were the same way. Parents told you to do something you didn't want to do. You asked the same question, why? Why do I need to do that? The answer I got wasn't a very good one because I told you to. That's all you need to know. I've got that lots of times because I said so. That was the best response you were going to get. If you're looking for a better one, it wasn't going to happen. But it teaches us responsibility. We teach our kids responsibility because as when they get older, that's the tools they're going to need to be successful in life. It's responsibility. Learning to do things when you don't want to do them. No one, you have to do it anyway. I don't want to have to go to work every day, but I, I mean, I do. To be honest with you, I'd like to be fishing. Or eating. Or eating and fishing. Yeah, eating and eating the fish that I catch. What I learned through the years is part of responsibility. And when you have a family, you know you got to take care of them. It's your responsibility, whether you want to or not. If you don't want to, you probably shouldn't be having a family to begin with. When you have a family, you got responsibilities. That's the same thing as being a Christian. You've got spiritual responsibilities. God loved us so much, rotten as we are. Rotten as I was, I can tell you right now. Before I was saved, I mean, you don't like me now, you should have met me before I was saved 20, 25 years ago. He really wouldn't have liked me. But I wasn't a very friendly guy. I learned a lot. God's worked on me. He's done a big a lot of work on me. And I hope the more I preach, I can get better at this. <laughs> but God's done a lot of work on me. And when he saved me, he made a change. For the better. And he's still working on me. It's like he's still working on us. That's something we should be thankful for. That God didn't give up on us. That God didn't look at us and say, you don't deserve to be saved. God could have easily done that. But we're all sinners saved by grace. By God's grace. We also got to realize there are lost people out there who don't know the Lord as their Savior and are headed for a devil's hell. 
a lake of fire, a bottomless pit, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. Remember, one time we were lost and somebody was kind enough to share the gospel with us. Where would we be right now if somebody didn't share the gospel with us? We would be lost. In a lost world, we'd be miserable. Think you got it bad now? It could be worse. Things could always be worse. But God blesses us. He takes care of us. He gives us what we need. And maybe not what we want all the time, but sometimes He'll grant us our wants. But we always have what we need. God's promised to supply our needs. And when I look back on my life, I can't see one time where God's fell on His promise. Every problem I've ever encountered in life, I didn't go through it alone. God was there with me. God gave me the strength to face those problems. And through His Word, He gave me the knowledge to know how to navigate through the problems. All these things God done for us that he didn't have to do. So to sit there and say you have nothing to be thankful for. Just sit back and count your blessings. Think about it. How your life is now versus how it could be. Instead of dwelling on what you don't have, thank God for the things you do have. The ability to go to church and worship freely. Without having to worry about the government arresting you. Or putting you to death. Many countries don't have that liberty. In America, we have that freedom. I jotted down a few things that we should be thankful for. Number one, we live in a land of plenty. A land of plenty. I mean, if you want junk, it's everywhere. You can get junk by the pound. We've got more than what we need in this country. And the physical ability to work a job, to take care of our family, and to tithe 10% from our checks to God as a way of saying thank you for blessing me. Thank you for taking care of me and my family. Being thankful is not just a set-aside holiday. It should be a daily thing to do. Notice the psalmist in, in, in Psalms 92, verse 2, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Notice the psalmist shows us two times to show forth our gratitude. In the morning when we wake up, God blessed us with an opportunity to take on another day. An opportunity, another day with our family and our friends. If I had to look back in my life, just 10 Thanksgivings ago, go back 10 years, 10 Thanksgivings ago, had a full table. This Thanksgiving, there'll be some empty chairs. I would love to have that 10 year ago Thanksgiving. My grandparents were, were there. My dad would be there. Some uncles would be there. But this Thanksgiving, they won't. They're, they're going on to be with the Lord. This Thanksgiving, if you don't think you got anything to be faithful or thankful for, look around the table, see who's there. Because the next Thanksgiving could be different. You might not be there. That's something to be thankful for. Every morning and every evening, you find it hard to go to sleep. Lay down and thank God. Think about the blessings God's blessed you with. I've got a home to go home to. I've got a truck that runs. 
He had a daughter that loves taking baths. <laughs> she doesn't understand how good she really has it. You really think about it. Warm water. When I was growing up, we were moving from house to house. It seemed like every three or four months. Spent most of my childhood with no utilities. I remember going with my dad to fill up coolers at convenience stores with water. And heating it up on the stove so they could take a warm bath. My sisters took a bath first, and when they got out, I had to take a bath in their old, cold, dirty water. Now I don't have to worry about that. Utilities are paid. There's a house for us to stay in. It's warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Got chickens that like to eat as much as I do. Dogs, all oh, they love to eat too. God's been good. God's been good to me, and I know He's been good to us. We've got a good church, we've got a great church family. I am so thankful for this church. If you don't think I'm grateful for you guys, me and my family are so thankful for this church. When I look back at what God's done for me, I thank God for the things I do have. I don't, not for the things I don't have. I don't focus on that. Because when you do that, it'll just get you down and out. But I have what I need. And God's promised to provide what we need. And he's been faithful to provide. So every morning, let's thank God for another day with our family. Another opportunity to provide for our family. And every evening before we go to sleep, just look around and see how God's been good, good to us. Father, we love you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for being such a gracious God. Lord, I thank you for salvation. Salvation that, Lord, cost you your very son. To be the sacrifice that we needed. In order to fellowship with you and to have a home in heaven. But Father, there are many who do not know you as their Savior. They don't know your Son, Lord. And you've called us, Father, to be witnesses to them, to show them how they can be saved, to share the salvation message that was once shared with us. Father, help us to be thankful as we come across the holidays, Lord, as Thanksgiving comes along and then Christmas, Lord. May we look and see how good you've been to us and how thankful we are. Lord, I love you and I thank you so much for all you've done. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.